Hey, this is Ellie Einhorn. Welcome to the Talk House podcast. Today we're broadcasting from Sonos 101G here in semi sunny Soho, NYC. This is the flagship Sonos store, and we are in the downstairs vinyl listening room. The Talk House has been curating a series here. You might have heard artists like DJ Premier, Prince Paul, Kathleen Hanna, Chris Gethard. We've had a lot of great talks. You can find those on our YouTube channel for video, or you can check out our SoundCloud page for audio. Today, we have two very exciting artists with us. Michael Chernis is an Obi-winning stage actor. You might know him as Cal Chapman from Netflix's Orange is the New Black. He's also Phineas Mason slash Tinkerer in the Marvel Cinematic Universe film Spider-Man Homecoming in theaters now. And his quirky spy show Patriot is currently streaming on Amazon. Season one out now. Our other guest, Sam Beam, has been releasing albums under the moniker Iron and Wine for 15 years. Last year saw the release of a collaborative LP titled Love Letter for Fire with Jessica Hoop. And coming up, he's releasing the sixth Iron and Wine record, Beast Epic, worldwide via Sub Pop. That's going to be later this month on August 25th, followed by a massive tour for the rest of the year covering all of America and Europe. Welcome to the show, Michael and Sam. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to turn it over to you, gentlemen. Thanks. Hey, Michael. Hey. How's, How's it going? going? Full disclosure, Michael and I have known each other for a while. Yeah. So this is more of a... But we haven't seen each other for a long time. No, so, so this, this is just a, a catch-up that people are now listening to. Mm, catch-up. Yeah, catch-up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look great. Well, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. So do you. The beard is in full bloom. Yeah, it's at that end of summer kind of... Giving it all it's, it has. Giving it all. Right, yeah. <laughs> Tired and, but uh, let's move on. Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been really busy though. We were catching up a second ago and just realizing that I had, in the meantime, between last I saw you in LA and now, you've been super busy. I've been super busy, um, very, very gratefully. Um, uh, I've been married since I saw you last. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so much. That, so that's much a whole other conversation. Yeah, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> um, yeah, things are good. I. Um, uh, it's it's all been it's been sort of a wild ride the past couple of years that we were sort of saying earlier, but I feel like um, my career has like taken on this whole new um, chapter that I didn't always see coming. You know, I sort of right started in the theater. Yeah, you know, that's what was. We were talking about, uh, sorry, just to catch you up on, on a previous conversation, <laughs> but let's start it now. Um, we were talking about how last we had seen each other, we, you were doing more theater stuff and, and dabbling in um, film work, uh, getting a lot of indie work here and there and mm -hmm. stuff. And now I just, I told you earlier, it's like you're always sneaking up behind me. You like catch <laughs> me by surprise in like every other movie that I see or TV show or something. So I'm just always, oh, look. There's a friend I know. That's why I do it. Playing an evil person. What is happening? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My whole career is just, you know, designed to freak you out. And, uh, <laughs> well, I, I guess I'm just more interested in what, uh, besides your machinations of how to scare me, um, I was curious how, just what your expectations were and now that you're on this other side and, and really busy and have moved and have gotten married, you have all these new experiences to... to um, Fill me in on. <laughs> yeah, I, it, you know it's funny. I was I, I just turned forty uh, a little bit ago, and that's um, fun. Yeah, and my mom sent me very sweetly like a package of all these old like high school programs from plays I was in, and uh, this article that was written in like the local paper about me when I um, I left Cleveland where I grew up uh, to go to Juilliard when I was eighteen, and there was like some local paper that was like, you know, local actor makes good and. My 18-year-old pretentious self was like, I just want a career in the theater. You know? <laughs> like, I don't want to sell out. And I was reading this the other day. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. But <laughs> I think for a long time that was sort of true. I think in the end, like, the practical constraints of a theater career, like making no money and sort of working yourself to death, just sort of, it right. wasn't sustainable. But I think in the end, like, the thing that always drove me was just this, this, it's hard to talk about without sounding so cheesy, but like it was Go just a it. love of like being in front of an audience yeah. and um, right and telling stories. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like at that age, aren't we all just like carving out our personality and yeah. so polarized and like exactly you know 
there's no gray area in like what you could want. It's all like yeah. your ideas are so. And so, yeah, when you're an artist and you want to put out something important, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's easy to get to um, to go down those those. Um, but I guess I'm just. I have no idea what I was going to say, but I remember. I remember that well, I uh, feeling. You, were, you must not have seen your career path. Uh, no, I remember wanting to be a very serious artist, though. Yeah, yeah, very serious. More film stuff at the time, or at the time, like eight. You know, when you're going to college, I was going into art school, and um, I had no idea what mm. I wanted to do. Yeah, no idea. Um, knew that I liked to make pictures, and I liked movies, and you know, just like the arts in general, but. Um, you know, I, I just recently, uh, my oldest daughter went to school and so you start to reflect, it went to college and so oh you're reflecting on like, um, on yourself, of course, it always comes back to me. Right. <laughs> sure. But, uh, but thinking of like, what, what, who would I have been if I had just taken a break and just lived a little bit instead of going and, mm. and straight into school or something like that. But, um, but yeah, so. I think about, I think about that a lot too, because I feel like I was so obsessed with being an actor when I was like 13 and I think what if I just taken a couple years to like live a life yeah but it's tough because I think pursuing anything out of the box anything sort of artistic like takes a relentlessness that yeah um, and it's a funny conversation to have with yourself because you're always doing it with the benefit of hindsight which is you know at the time you're just winging it as a kid and you have no experience you don't even know what to ask for yeah it's true (laughs) you know what I mean you're just sort of I know this is important to me and I'm going to go in this direction and see what happens. Uh, but, yeah. but then you figure out that life is like that all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Even when you're, even when you're older. Yeah. But Were you always playing music though? As, as a, for a hobby, yeah. yeah. Just because I liked music. Yeah. Um, but I, but I, uh, it's funny, um, I just never took it seriously for some reason. Mm. I mean, I, I still feel like I don't in a certain way. <laughs> Hopefully, in a healthy way. Yeah, but um, never took it serious enough to think that, that was something I could pursue. Oddly enough, decided painting was something I could pursue as a <laughs> as a as a career. Was <laughs> amazing, but uh, at the same time, um, how about you? Did you? I mean, I I can. I feel like if I had been an actor, I would have been in the exact same spot as you were going. You know, plays are where it's at because you feel like. The idea is that's where people are have more integrity or something. It's not mired by trying to sell something. But if you, I don't know what. I think that was in there. I also think, and I don't mean this to be like self-deprecating, but I think that was the world that accepted me first. You know, like I yeah. think I was uh, maybe just like a little too weird and unconventional for like the <laughs> movies to be like that kid. You're not weird now, though. No, no, I cleaned it up. Yeah. Uh, you should have seen me. <laughs> Um, but, uh, you know, I think I just found the voices that I was drawn to were like the young playmakers that, you know, I, and were really just pals of mine at the time. It wasn't like, um, like a playwright I've done a lot of work with is this guy, Adam Rapp. And, um, at the time he was just a guy that I knew who like, I liked hanging out with and we would get beers together. And then eventually his work started getting done and I was, he would put me in his little plays and, and it just was this relationship and this collaboration that just took shape over time in this really sort of organic way. Right. Um, at the time, you thought there would be some moment where you were went from where you were at and wanting to be somewhere else to that place where you wanted to be, and you found out that it just happens and you don't recognize the transition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I felt that way. Looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I felt that way too. Um, Sorry. No, I was just going to say, like, you're, for me, I'm a huge fan of you and, and your music. And one of the things that I feel like Thanks. you do so well is transition. Like, I feel like I've seen you in a number of phases from uh-huh. like very intimate sort of solo stuff to full band stuff to um, your collaborations with like Calexico. And right, like, right. it's, I feel like you've been able to. And I don't know, I want to hear what, maybe it's because you didn't plan this life out for yourself (laughs) that you've been able to sort of not reinvent yourself, but to stretch yourself as an artist continually. Um, Um, Well, thanks. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it's been uh, an important thing to me. Um, 
I don't, can't tell whether I'm like reaching, always reaching for something new or just get bored with what I'm doing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it has more to do with just the idea of all my favorite artists, whether it's filmmakers or or artists, painters, or or even musicians. They are always sort of taking some some elemental thing that they do and that only they do and then keep trying to dress it in different clothes and mm. see what it looks like in different clothes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so like a like an easy thing would be like a director and like genre. You right. can jump from genre to genre but you recognize a director's style. Sure. Um, that was always my goal. Um, it just took me a while to figure out what it was what my element was that I was playing with. But I, um, yeah, I don't really go into it with, uh, that said, I don't really have much of an MO or a way to do that. You just sort of look backwards and say, oh, in hindsight, again, you can look back and say, oh, I was trying on these different things. Mm. But at the time, you're just sort of winging it, trying to be in the moment and reacting to what's coming up, yeah. like some a new relationship or some new instrument that you've gotten or right. some, I don't know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, though. That's, that's uh, really kind of you. Some people, you, music's funny like that. Um, I feel like some people <clears throat> look for music to be, or their artists to be one thing, something reliable, and some right. people are looking for them to shock or something to, right. to, to inspire by being different sometimes or yeah. surprise. Uh -huh. um, and... Even myself included. I don't know if you're like this, but I listen for, yeah, a super fickle listener. There's some people where I expect them to do so, to turn my head and surprise me. And some people I say, oh, that's too different. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. so ridiculous. Yeah, no, I know. I don't I, feel like actors have that problem, though. Do you not think so? as much? I think. I mean, sometimes, but I think in a way, it's it's always um, sort of applauded when actors stretch themselves. Yeah, I feel like Definitely. people have an attachment to to music artists that you know, if you go too far from the thing right. I want, right. I'm going to be pissed. I, um, guess there, I guess there is ways uh, that actors get... I mean, there's definitely actors that play to type or play yeah. against type. You know, they get typecast super... Totally. Either because of like some physical feature or just their yeah. personality, you know. But, but at the same time, they're asked to butt up against it a lot more, I think, than musicians... Yeah, much more. Well, I, I mean, in, I think the, maybe the difference is we're directly selling ourselves. Like you, <laughs> <laughs> you at least have like a song to hide behind or an instrument to hide behind. But I'm like, hey, what about this guy? <laughs> <You know? It's> <laughs> like, <laughs> um, do you feel like burdened? Like, are there songs that you feel like people want you to sing every time they come see you? And oh, well, it doesn't feel like a burden to me. I mean, I feel. You know, there's so much music out there. I mean, there's so much music that are you in a certain way you feel blessed that people are just still paying attention because right. there's so many options. Good Lord. Um, yeah, I mean, do I need to play uh, <clears throat> Flightless Bird again? No, not for myself personally, yeah. but it's a fun job to get yeah, up and sure. play something that, yeah. you know, I still... Um, it feels like a blessing uh, in a lot of ways. And I don't really... It would be one thing if I had to like read a 300 page novel every night that people wanted to hear, but it's a three minute song. So <laughs> I would pay and to I, hear you read a 300 page novel. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get pigeonholed for that now. Uh, <laughs> that might take a while to happen. <laughs> but you have uh, a really deep catalog. I mean, you've got a lot of songs at this point. Yeah, that's, so. yeah and, and I don't feel like I do. Uh, and I don't feel like. Um, burdened by any of those mm. songs you know i don't feel like like you were saying you're um I don't, I don't feel like uh i have to get up and play a certain role i just get up and sing mm. a song that i you know yeah. that i wrote i didn't have to like put on a persona mm. but um at the same time there are definitely songs that i don't but i also get to not play them i can also just yeah, put them away totally for a little imagine. while yeah. and and do something else yeah but, but um 
so what else has been going on? I feel like I want to like. I feel like I'm catching up. And you've been in like Spider Man. You've been in like. I'm in the Spider Man, (laughs) little indie film Spider Man, (laughs) up and coming superhero. Yeah, it's doing okay. A couple people have seen it. uh, (laughs) Did you know about the Tinkerer? I didn't know about the Tinkerer until until you became him. Until I became him. Until they called me. Um. Yeah, he's a he's a cool guy. He's one of the he's one of the. uh, it might be the first time anyone's ever called the Tinker a cool guy. Uh, he's one of like the OG villains for Spider Man, though. He was in those like very first issues. He and the Vulture, who Michael Keaton plays, are like two of the like old school right. uh, Spider Man baddies. Um, and in the original comic book, he's sort of this like skinny, bald, old scientist type guy. I can and see why they why so they, yeah, cast so they, you, they yeah. typecast me again. Um, <laughs> So in our 2017 version, he's sort of like a tech geek kind of guy. Um, right. But it's just cool because uh, I feel like the, the the folks at Marvel are just really doing something interesting now where I feel like they they know that they have this rabid fan base that's paying attention. And so yeah. they, they tease them, they give them what they want sometimes, they turn it on its head, they like have all these hidden clues and Easter eggs, they call them in the films. Right. And so you really like a layman who knows nothing about the comics can watch them and, and be interested, but then somebody who's obsessive about it can also right. get a bunch out of it too. Yeah. Um, um, how did the Orange is the New Black bit come about? That, uh, that it's funny, sort of when we were talking earlier about, you know, um, friends and relationships that you just don't know what they're going to turn into. A playwright friend of mine, Nick Jones, was on the writing staff for the first couple seasons. And the story he told me, at least, uh, was that when they were sort of pitching the idea for the first season in the writer's room, they decided that Piper was going to have this sort of like hippie, long-haired brother. And um, he says they had like sort of an idea wall. And when they were like, who should it be? Like, what should he look like? That Nick Googled a picture of me and he was like, like this guy? (laughs) And they're like, yeah, sure, put it on the wall. And then when it time came time to cast it, they're like, who are we going to get to play this brother? And he's like, well, what about that guy who's on the wall? And they just called me and offered it to me. And uh, I had weirdly played the the actress Taylor Schilling, who plays Piper. I had played her brother on a different series before on this NBC <laughs> hospital drama called Mercy. So I just figured they're like, get, that's what the, I was get ass- the guy. Who- that's how I was assuming it came about. Yeah, sure. I was just assuming. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you were a big Mercy <laughs> fan. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> right, I sent you that Mercy t-shirt back in the day. Uh, um, yeah, so it was just like totally out of out of the blue. And crazy. Um, I feel like that's how my career has worked in a lot of ways is I can just sort of trace back to somebody that I, yeah, you know, it, it all came sort of through weird channels. It wasn't just like I auditioned for it and I got the right, part. Right, right, yeah. You know, if yeah. someone was to ask you, how do I get from point A to point B? Yeah. So say you just be nice to people. Just be nice to people. <laughs> Go out for beers with them. Yeah. Uh, you know. But else, you know, take it seriously. Yeah. Like, you know, um, I think it's a given, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I've been extremely lucky in that way too. I mean, it, you know. And also be lucky. Yeah, be lucky, <laughs> be nice, and you'll, you'll have a good time. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know this. I can't remember if I ever told you, but your music has often um, been a direct... Uh, sort of inspiration for me. And I did a play, uh, a beautiful play by a playwright, Annie Baker, a play called The Aliens. And uh, in it, I have I had to go through like some pretty big emotional gymnastics. And between act one and act two, uh, one of the main characters, who's my character's best friend, dies in during the intermission, basically. Oh, wow. And um, I would listen backstage during intermission to Dead Man's Will. Oh, wow. And the trapeze swinger, and uh, a couple of your songs that just would just to break just you. break my heart <laughs> and make me cry, and just to get you in the mood, just get me in the mood, and make my acting easier. Um, so I often have your voice in my head when I'm. Wow, that's something. cool, man! I didn't know that. You yeah. didn't tell me that. You're so cagey. Yeah. Well, it's a weird thing to be like, <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I find yeah. that a lot of people uh, don't know how to talk to me about my music. Because yeah. it's not like a jokey, fun place to talk about. It's a private yeah. place where it yeah. usually meets them. Yeah. Um, well, music's hard to talk cool. about in general, and <laughs> especially, I think. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. But, yeah. Well, you write these, 
I used the word intimate before, but I also am thinking about you today. I feel like you write songs that are, um, for me, in the best way, sort of timeless. Like, no, thanks. I feel like it's not, you're not writing about pop culture or cell phones. Not or, yet. You know, yeah. Not yet. <laughs> like it, I give could a, be. Give me a minute though. Um, I, yeah, I feel like, thank you. Yeah. By the way, I don't mean to interrupt you when you're complimenting me. No um, <laughs> but at the same time, I do feel like um, those things are kind of boring. I don't know. I, they're not boring because I'm thinking about them all the time. But there's there's oh, seems like, to be a yeah, certain yeah. set of rules when I sit down to write. Yeah. Um, and it it has its own rules different from the rules of when I'm having a conversation with someone or mm. just going through my thoughts in the day when I sit down with a tune in mind. And I also, I like to joke and like cut up with my friends. I, But I don't seem to be able to find huh. space for that in songs. When I sit down to write a song, it seems to have to yeah. be about life or death mm. heavy things. <laughs> I think maybe it's, yeah. maybe it's the only place I get that stuff out. Yeah, mm. maybe. Or, but... But I do feel like songs are good for that um, because, I don't know, songs have so much space. You could do anything yeah. in a song. You can express any emotional content you want to in a song, whether you want to scream for joy or scream in pain or yeah. scream for... Um, and so I don't seem to be able to scream for joy. I just scream for... Actually, that's not I feel like there's chair. a lot of joy in your music. <laughs> yeah, I was going to... I mean, I feel like you're... you're, you're grappling with the big stuff i mean i feel like death is it's is present of, in a lot of your songs and yeah I, f and I feel like people don't know how to talk to me about it because we don't know how to that our our contact with that side of our existence is sort of lost in our culture mm. like we sort of put death away in a yeah. safe place where we don't really know how to talk about loss or or those cycles of life the final cycle of life yeah um and I found a safe place for myself writing about it. Mm. Um, but I don't always know how to talk to people about it. And then when people do try to talk to me about it, I'm always like, uh, I don't really know you, but <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm, thank you. I'm glad this song, you know, touched you in a way. It's a strange, yeah, it's a bet. strange um, relationship I have with with putting those uh, that's that content out into the world, but also being removed from the people that it reaches you know it's a strange yeah strange thing yeah but i don't mean the arts in general you never know how you're gonna how you're gonna how you're gonna affect people i mean acting's the same you're just on the stage and trying to be in the moment and you know not in control of what everyone else out in the audience is receiving but willing to put it out there and yeah. just see what happens yeah and just riding that wave. I mean, you know, it's like, it's, I don't know if you feel the same way about performing in front of, I feel like when I'm in front of an audience, it's just like, I, I there's so much relinquishing of control that I have to do. Like, you know, it's just like, I can't, I can't, uh, I can just do my job, but it's not up to me, like what your experience of this is. Right. And, um, yeah. I think there's an art is like in general, whether it's acting or music or the visual arts in general, I mean, that's kind of our job. It's just to not answer every question, but just pose the questions mm -hmm. and put it out there and just create a dialogue instead of saying, I have all the answers. Would you like to hear them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. These, like, that's my favorite, my favorite type of art. <laughs> what do your kids think of what you do? Uh... You know, well, I have a bunch, and so yeah. they are. <laughs> it varies. Kind of, yeah, uh, you, you know, five. Yeah, the yeah. oldest one is nineteen, and you know, she's gone through the the right. whole gamut of it. Like, it's cool, Dad. You know, gets to do these cool things, or right. or like, man, I wish my friends would like me instead of just my dad's <laughs> Twilight song. You know, right. to all the thing. Now it's just part of her, um, part of her experiences. Mm -hmm you know, walking around this planet. Her dad does this for a living. And so, but at the same time, I feel like she has the benefit of of um, having a, seeing the reality of what that kind of life is, where I, when I was growing up, listening to my heroes going like, man, I wonder what their their life must be so, you know, uh, romantic right. or, or just magical. And right. she's like, yeah, magic is 
<laughs> <laughs> which is a which is good. I yeah, think it's she's healthy. Yeah. She's um she's really creative and um just but has a good sense of like what that kind of life is like. Yeah, much more mm. much more so than I did. Just sure running into it blindly. Yeah, yeah. 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 She, does she she what is she wants to be an artist or? She is into. Uh, she's going to school here for um, prosthetic makeup and theater oh, wow. makeup and stuff. Yeah, she's into makeup. Oh, cool. Um, and just arts in general. She likes making films. She likes you know. She's young enough and has her head on her shoulder where she's just like you know what I would just want to experience a lot of different things and see what sticks. And yeah, this is really great. Yeah. So, man, I remember that time. If I could go back, yeah, to some time in my life, it would be art school. Really? That would. Oh yeah. Just, you know, knowing what I know now, you'd be like, just so fun. Just killing it. Just Was that what, did you, you went to Juilliard. Yeah. What was that like? That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was so Juilliard. It was, a, it was, a, it's a, it's a different place now. It's like much more, I think, sort of touchy feely. But at the time it was like very, um, it was sort of very competitive and kind of, kind of dark like it was it was sort of like the isn't that good prep though yeah in a way <laughs> yeah in a way but i think it also broke a lot of people you know yeah. there were a lot of talented people who i feel like um you know i think they try to break you down and the idea is that they'll build you back up but some, don't some people that, that don't part. build back <laughs> yeah, up forget yeah. that part <laughs> yeah oh we just yeah. ran out of time yeah. sorry <laughs> broke what you were... down but you'll figure it out <laughs> yeah. good luck what were we gonna do <laughs> what was next yeah um next class um, I do feel like that's important, though. I mean, I I feel like most personality. Well, that's a, that's a tough one because you know that yeah, I do I feel like every... creative types need to be nurtured, but at the same time, given a you know the, a realistic outlook on what, how things are going to be, mm-hmm. um, that's tricky. Yeah, but at the same time, I feel like most people who are really serious about it and to be successful at any art, you have to just love doing the thing and they'll do it no matter what their instructor, how their instructor screwed them over or, or lifted them up. Yeah. I mean, I think um, training for me pushed me in a way that I never would have pushed myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like I was given um, sort of parameters and, uh, you know, a certain amount of restriction was helpful for yeah. me, especially when I was younger. But um, at the same time, I feel like I was, there was, when I was in school, I felt like there was a right way to do things. Like there was yeah, a right yeah. way to talk and stand and be in a right. a right way to be myself. And then I got out yeah. of school and, you know, I was like, oh, wait, there's a million different ways to, <laughs> to do yeah. this, you know. Um, definitely, yeah, yeah, that's that's a definitely a part of life. Yeah. Um, feeling the right or the right way is a right. It's a pretty subjective idea. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Did you always know that you wanted to go to acting school? I mean, I know you. Your mom kept the clippings, but she kept the you? clippings. I did. I think I. Uh, the first I was sort of like a, 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 a like a nerdy spell as a kid in uh, in like junior high, and uh, the theater in the beginning was like that was the community that sort of accepted me and yeah. uh, but the first play I ever did it was just like ooh yeah give me more of that and um, uh, I immediately started taking classes at this children's theater school uh, just outside of Cleveland where I grew up and um, it was kids from all over the greater Cleveland area and we there were like weekend classes and I really um, that's where like the bug really bit me and uh Mm -hmm. there was a guy who was a couple years older than me um and he got into juilliard and so he was a senior when i was a freshman and i really kind of just wanted to be him like he was this cool guy and he would come back in the summers um did he do his eyebrows like that yeah he did yeah that's (laughs) why i do that uh (laughs) he uh you know, he was just like, he like wore like a leather jacket and like smoked cigarettes and it was just like, <laughs> it's so dumb. But like, and he introduced no, me to like Sam Shepard plays. Like I was right. doing mostly like children's theater. I was like doing like Hansel and Gretel and he was like, here, yeah, read this. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. Um, <laughs> this isn't Hansel and yeah, Gretel. Right. He, he dosed me with words. And uh, <laughs> first one's free. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Um <laughs> Do you have any more of those David Hammond plays, man? <laughs> um, uh, and so uh, 
I really kind of was just like, I have to move to New York and go to Juilliard so I can be like that guy. Oddly enough, I can imagine you really wanting to go back and do Hansel and Gretel now though, yeah, that totally you have to, done that. That's exactly ones. it. That's what I want to do. Maybe we can do that together. Just say you the can word, write man. the music. You've got my number. Just call me. Great. Cool. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry. We keep no, digressing. No. And we keep um, on having this private conversation. I'm sorry. I'm forgetting that I'm supposed to be talking to the thing. There's right. no right way to do that, Sam. <laughs> yeah, right. Subjective. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, but Juilliard, <laughs> did you, so you knew that you wanted to go. And when you went, did you say, this is me? Yes. Sort of. I think I had no idea what I was getting myself into. You know, I think I knew that I wanted to study acting and I knew I wanted to be in New York. And um, the, the the program at Juilliard, there's, it's a mix of, there's some people who were right out of high school, but then there were people who were, had, completed four years of college and for them it was sort of a master's situation. There were people who right. had been professional actors for a couple of years. I think the oldest person in our class was 32 when I started and I was 18. And so I like faked being older for like, right. you know, it was like this thing of moving to New York from Cleveland and being around all these older people that I just, I think it took me a while to be authentic. Like I was just like, ah, I'm going to pretend I know what you're talking about. Like <laughs> I'm going to lie and say I've seen that that movie. That Oh, we're not supposed to do that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I do that still. <laughs> I'm to you, I'm to you. But yeah, I mean, I, but you're also at this age where you're still carving out yeah. who you're going to be. I mean, Creating your identity. Yeah, yeah. It's a funny time to be at such a, such a serious, like making serious choices when you're... Yeah. Don't want to have a whole lot to to fall back, but anyway, I'm sorry. No, I guess yeah, again. that's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, what about you? You, we've talked about it was mine was I went to art school right. and it was a similar thing where we're all like 20 years old and trying to be amateur philosophers. It was yeah. ridiculous, but at the same time, I and a lot of teachers were either the same polarized thing, super in, inspiring, or just beat you down. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I gleaned from the whole thing by and by was that you just have to fall in love with what you're doing. With, For me, it was painting and making marks, just falling in love with moving paint around. Mm. Um, and then I eventually got into filmmaking and followed that rabbit hole. But, um, but also just, and how, but also how people's criticism and that social atmosphere is fun, but only and also horrifying and bludgeoning for your art. But at the same time, all those things are valuable because you learn that everyone has a different opinion. And like we were saying before, right is a subjective idea. And right. it's really like you have to find what you what you like yeah. and just do it as much as you want to. Um, but uh, I'm trying to pull that back to acting, and I don't know how. Oh. <laughs> no worries. Hey. But you did, so then you were you were teaching film. Yeah, well, for, yeah. I guess I went down to the rabbit hole and then got into filmmaking and when, was doing production stuff. And when my kids came along, started um, teaching because the hours were were more friendly to having kids mm. um, than production hours because they get a little long. Yeah. Um, and I was always a, like naively of the idea that you know those who don't do teach. And it's really not true. It's, it's not like true, it was yeah. so like inspiring yeah. to me. I just mainly because there's so much stuff, and I do this all the time with music. You internalize all these ideas, but just enough to do them, huh. but don't really know how to explain it thoroughly yeah. to someone. Yeah. But then when you take a moment to explain it thoroughly to someone, you learn. Oh, this is why I, it. You do it a lot with technical things. But also, you know, aesthetic things and yeah. other things. I'm sure acting is probably similar. Yeah, the mm-hmm. tiny little bit that I've ever tried to teach or talk about acting or direct yeah. something, like it's, uh, yeah, you're forced to be like, yeah, how do I yeah. approach a scene? <laughs> like what, right. it's, so much of it is instinctual. Mm-hmm. But to actually have to then verbalize it, it, I think it refines and crystallizes your process for you. In yeah. A, um, yeah, yeah, yeah break it down. Uh, yeah. So that was a really rewarding experience. Um, uh, glad to not have to do that now. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was a lot of fun and, yeah. and really rewarding. 
You've talked to me before, though, about maybe making a film someday. Are you interested? Yeah, in yeah, film? always. Uh, I have a writing partner in, in Austin. We keep dabbling with, with screenplay. My problem is I have a hard time multitasking, and mm -hmm. I've always been really focused on writing songs and always wanting to do music but never putting the songbook away mm -hmm. long enough to to dig in because it's sense. a long, huge process. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I think, I feel like I'm getting to that point where this is the first time I don't really have another record in mind and just sort of living in the moment of putting this one out and playing these songs and then working on some paintings and um, and preparing a movie. Yeah, there's a couple of books like oh, the, cool. the option. Yeah. Yeah. I was always like, you know, Writing is kind of my thing. I was like, yeah, I'll finish one of these screenplays. Well, finishing screenplays are hard. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. Finishing things are hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Songs are easy. Songs are easier. They're short. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I watched the two videos for your new record. Oh, thanks. You're 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 good in them. You, you're doing some acting there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So acting, acting it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm always so shy. Those things are really? so hard. Oh, yeah. So, so good. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I just don't give a fuck anymore. I just like yeah. Hey, your camera's that's the key, on. Okay. I think yeah. It helps. It helps. But I I always have a hard time. I feel like it's also. Uh, just always in my head. I have a hard mm. time. I've always loved uh, plays and drama uh, productions, but I always stay behind the camera because I can watch what's happening and think about it and then adjust instead of like being in the moment right. and just, you know what I mean? Reacting, I can always yeah. tell that there's a lag between what I'm, and I feel like people I act against mm. feel the lag too. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, Music, it took me a long time to jump in and not be constantly processing. Yeah. I think that's why I just love um, recording for so yeah. long because it was making sure. something, thinking about it, doing it again, yeah. or changing it. Um, but yeah, you live and you learn. It's, I've um, since been doing it enough where now you find the joy in just getting out there and seeing what happens, yeah. being in the moment. Yeah. Yeah, so, you, I, so I'm always. I have to imagine. Me, I don't know. This is maybe sounding like a stupid question, but when you were making those original like recordings just yeah. at home, because I used to play music with my friends and like right, right. make home recordings, but like yours, you were you like this is so dumb. But were you like I'm onto something here, or did, did you have a sense that what you were uh, making was special? Or I mean, I like the way it sounded. I wouldn't. I couldn't really. You know, you're just sort of in it. To smelling your own breath to really know uh -huh. what value it is um, outside of just doing it. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I liked lots of music and I could tell it was different than the other things I was hearing. Not terribly different, but, you know, unique enough. Um, and I knew it was something that I really liked doing, so it was worth spending a lot of time on. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I don't, I didn't really have much of a, maybe I don't always have a, much quite enough self-awareness sure. that's how I get by <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, I realize it's sort of like an odd question too because it's you know you're having to look back knowing everything you know now but like mm. there is um, maybe it's because you were a sort of you know sort of consciously sort of being able to sort of re-record and, and be sort of in private with it but the, I remember first hearing your first record and just feeling like it was unlike anything else that oh, was yeah. out there at the time because it was so per, it felt so personal and it felt oh, yeah. um, it had that great quality of like someone making something that oh, cool. felt important to them but it didn't feel like right over produced and over wrought and oh right yeah. oh that's cool I didn't um, it was definitely minimalistic <laughs> but at the same time I, I didn't feel like it was. I felt like there were things going on that were similar, you know, like not maybe, maybe not necessarily right at the exact same moment, but I always felt it was like some big cross between Cowboy Junkies or Mazzy Star or Will Oldham. Stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like it's all in the water. I didn't mm -hmm. feel like I was like creating something out of the ether. It was just drawn from a lot of different sure. things. Um, but I felt like 
maybe just my vocal approach or and how it all kind of weaved together mm-hmm. maybe made it feel you know along with the subject matter um maybe made it um feel like its own thing mm-hmm. but yeah it never felt totally unique to me just because mm-hmm. i knew all these other things that were sort of swimming in similar water mm-hmm. you know what i mean but i guess yeah. you know the, I guess it's like movies though. You can say like about well, this heist movie, and then there's like all these other heist movies that sure. are that are like right, great, but not that one. <laughs> yeah, there's just some of them have their own, and I don't think that's something you can really plan. You just sort of let your. In hindsight, I didn't have any plan. About yeah, you just doing what you. And maybe what that's doing. what I, I sense in your music too. Is and that's mm-hmm. maybe that's more what I mean. It didn't doesn't feel like someone who's like got this like agenda right. and it's like and now I'm gonna get lack of self-awareness that's there it is yeah. that's the theme <laughs> 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 well do you feel like because I mean I was talking about um acting uh and me having a hard time stopping the processing was that something that you had to go through I've always like my all my actor friends have a different thing some of them just like to get up and do stuff and some of them are very particular um about how they approach things. What was yours? I mean, it's interesting. It's, it it's varies from role to role. I mean, I think for me, maybe what I'm jealous of and what you do is like, I feel like there's a certain amount of just whoring myself that I have to do. <laughs> that's sort of. <laughs> that's what I love about you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's just inherent in the job where I feel like you, there's, there's things you do because you're like, well, that's, you know, that's a good gig and that, it's going to get more people to right, right. know me. And then that way I'll be able to go back and do the little art projects that I want to do. But right, like, right. I feel like for me, process is, it all depends on the thing. Like to be totally honest, some projects don't require as much yeah, forethought yeah. or as much research or, as, or just don't as, require as much from me. And right, then right. there are other things that require all of you. And they're all fun in their own ways. You know, I love to do silly, stupid comedy stuff. And like, yeah, yeah. That exercises a certain muscle of my personality and my, yeah. my humanness that I like that needs to be expressed as well. But like, I, uh, there's just, you know, there's sometimes you're just like, I, I have to do dumb stuff in order to do the good stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but you know, again, it's all, that's probably. I hate to say if somebody might like your funny stuff more than your serious oh, stuff. Oh, sure, until I think most people do, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that strange, though? Do you find, find a relationship with, with your audience where you're like, why don't you guys like this stuff that I'm doing? Oh, totally, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, it's it's hard because I feel like you like the character on Orange and the Black is sort of this, I love him, but it's like that's still the thing I get recognized the most for, and he's like sort of like a hippie stoner. Pretty popular show. Yeah, <laughs> some people have seen it. But it's, uh, you know, I don't want to be that sort of like right. hippie stony brother all the time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. No, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, you want to be able to express the full spectrum of yeah. all the things that you can do, yeah. I mean, the, the actor I always come back to is Philip Seymour Hoffman was like a big hero of mine, and yeah. the way that he was able to be a quote-unquote character actor and play all these very different kinds of people. Right. But um, it always felt like there was a p- authentic part of Phil that was coming through them too. It wasn't right, like, right. now I put on some right. glasses and grow a funny mustache and I'm a different right. person. There was, he would change physically, but he would also channel some part of his his truth through it. And, right, right. And make these sort of character characters real people and right. you know people that you could... Um, really believe in and get behind, and you know, so definitely, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, you were saying that. I was like thinking about all the roles that I'd seen him in, and like which one, like, like oh my god, yeah, he just did like all these. I think, yeah. do you remember that, um, uh, was that Moneyball where he was like the baseball coach? Yeah, I know, <laughs> like, and then him all and these Big great, like, and physical he, things to lean on and just dig into. He was so fun, he was great. But yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. Um, um, it's one of those seven, seven minute pauses. Yeah, but I think we've been talking more than seven, <laughs> seven minutes. <laughs> um, so you got a tour, tour. Yeah, new record, tour, tour, new record. Uh, yeah, this has been a fun one. Um, uh, it feels like. Uh, 
it feels similar to some of the older records, just in it's more sim, more sparse in the approach. Mm -hmm. But uh, it doesn't really feel like walking backwards. It feels like following a circle around to the same place. Mm. Yeah, which is kind of a fun way. That's right to get back to that um, that stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a full band on tour with you, or full band? Yeah, a new band. Oh, cool. Which uh, two um, uh, two people that played on the record, and then two new people. Um, a lady named Beth Goodfellow is playing the drums, and a lady named Eliza. Jones is playing the keys, and they both sing their asses off, and oh, they sound awesome. great. So that's fun. Great. Get a, yeah, get a, make a big racket. Cool. What do you got coming up? You doing the Patriot thing? Getting Season ready to two go? of Patriot, we're going to shoot in Paris. Um, I don't know if that was a spoiler. Shit, maybe I'm not uh -oh. supposed to say that. You're well, fired. Whatever, doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, just got fired. Paris, uh, Paris Texas. Paris, Texas, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Parisburg, Virginia. Right. <laughs> Paris, Ohio. Uh so I'll be doing that, and uh, I'm on this sh this Netflix show called Easy, which is um, really one of my favorite things that I've done in a long time with this filmmaker Joe Swanberg, and um, it's all improvised. Oh wow! Um, and it's an anthology series. It all takes place in Chicago, and every episode is a different uh, group of characters. But well, that sounds um, perfect for what you were talking about before. You get to stretch out and do lots of different things. Yeah, I mean, it's different actors. In uh, you episode. don't get to play everyone. I don't get to play every character. No, oh, I see. should. Where's your phone? Let me call them. Yeah, let me. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, so I, I did. That's a, exciting. I did some more of that. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, schmacked in a way. Well, you are easy. Yeah, horn it out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you, man. It's good to see you, man. Yeah. yeah. Michael, <clears throat> Michael Chernis, Sam Beam. Thank you so much for joining us on the Talk House podcast. When are we going to see you next? Um, tomorrow. What when are you are doing? going to see you next? What are you doing later? I don't know. Dinner at Andrew Carmelini's. Listen, catch this. <laughs> <laughs> you just made it weird. Yeah, it just got <laughs> it weird. It was going so well. It just got weird. Let's cut that. Let's start again. Let's just take that again. No, you can't cut that. Michael Chernus, Sam Beam, thank you so much for joining us on the TalkHouse podcast. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks to Sonos for hosting. And we'll be back soon. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and at TalkHouse on Twitter for behind-the-scenes shots from today's podcast. This is Ellie Einhorn for the TalkHouse, signing off. <laughs>